Hey there, my name is David DeLucci. I'm a former Major League Baseball player, 2001 World Series champion, and currently I'm a baseball analyst for ESPNU. I'm gonna give you some drills that you can do by yourself or with a family member while we're away from sports. Stay tuned. All right, so let's go over my six steps of hitting. And what I like to tell all the young players out there is when we go to the batter's box, our mentality is to drive the ball. We're gonna to try to hit the ball over the outfielder's head. So everything that we're gonna do is generate as much power as we can from the ground up to our bat. Okay, six steps. I like to see a balanced stance. And the first step is gonna be the load. We're gonna get our momentum behind our swing and we're just gonna push back, put our weight on our back leg just a little bit. It's kind of like a water moccasin. Right before he goes to strike, he's gonna move back. So we're gonna get that load, that's step one. Step two is we stride. Now I like to see a stride that's about two to four inches. Anything outside of that, we lose our balance and we move our head toward the ball. So we're gonna step one, load. Step two, stride. The third step, is we're gonna generate our power from our belly and our legs. And that third step is to rotate. And as I rotate my belly button, my back leg is gonna pivot like I'm squishing a cockroach. All right, load, stride, rotate. Step four is I'm gonna bring my hands to the point of contact. This is where I wanna hit a ball that I can drive as far as possible in front of the plate. Step five, is extend to get every ounce and fiber of my body in the swing. And step six is the follow through. I'm perfectly balanced. And if I wanted to check my swing, I could drive a pipe through the top of my head, out the bottom, and it would be perfectly straight up and down. If I bend over, if I get off balance, I break that pipe. After I make contact, I become a base runner. So any way that I'm unbalanced, it's gonna take me longer to get to first base. Six steps, here we go. Nice balanced stance, load, stride, rotate that belly button, squash that bug, barrel to the point of contact, extend, follow through, check yourself to make sure you didn't break the pipe. Now for Players at every age and level, everyone wants to know, where should I stand around the batter's box? Should I move forward? Should I move back? How close do I get? And the easiest way to gauge where your feet need to be is to take the knob of the bat and stick it on your belly button. You want the bat to cross home plate and touch the outside corner. That way you know and you're confident that your barrel can hit any pitch over the plate. If it's a little further out, by extending your arms, you can still hit that ball that's four, five inches off the plate. Okay, so that's exactly how we wanna line ourselves up. Anytime we walk to the plate, stick the barrel over the outside corner, the end over the outside corner, and the knob to your belly button. That's the perfect spot that you wanna be. At younger levels, it's okay to have your front foot in line with the front of the plate. As you get older, you may feel comfortable getting back. If a guy's throwing really hard, you may wanna move back a little bit. If he's throwing soft, you may wanna move forward, but this is where we like to be and this is how I like to take, teach the youth. Now, we're gonna go through the six steps, okay? We're gonna be a mirror. Ruby and I are gonna do the same thing. We're gonna be in a nice balanced stance and we're gonna go through our steps. One, that's load, two, Stride, three, rotate the belly button, four, barrel to contact, five, extend, six, follow through, and check yourself where you can keep that pipe in line. And that's perfection. Okay, so one of the drills that we do to hone our techniques of our swing is to hit off the tee. And I know a lot of players will say, oh, that's basic. T-ball is for seven or eight years old. Well, that's not true. 
because even major leaguers hit off the tee 300, 400 times a day. And they wanna feel comfortable that they have their muscle memory in their swing down before they go out and face a live pitcher. So there's a couple of things that you wanna do when you're working off the tee. Now, one of the tricks that I like to teach is you line the ball up with two seams. As you approach the plate, just like we talked about in the six steps, I wanna concentrate on a small spot on the ball that I'm gonna hit. I'm not just swinging at the ball, I'm swinging at a tiny spot that is gonna give me a line drive, backspin, hit into the fence. Now here, just depends on what you have available to work with, but we have a nice chain link fence in the backdrop. So we're gonna hit into this fence and all the while I'm gonna concentrate on the six steps. And when I make contact off of this tee and I'm picking that spot and hitting that spot, I'm gonna keep my eyes on the ball so that I can try to see the barrel make contact and it should go off the tee into the net. Now, if I roll over, which means I extend my arms too much, I'm gonna hit that ball and it's gonna be a ground ball to this side. If I drop the barrel and I swing, I'm either gonna crush the black part of this tee or I'm gonna hit a ball up on the top of the fence. So this is your best coach if it's just one person doing drills. You will learn so much about your swing by the way this ball flies off the tee. So six steps, load, stride, rotate, barrel to the ball, here we go. Perfect ball right up the middle. That's what we're trying to do is to hit this ball about my chest high to head high into the fence. Once again, all I'm trying to do is get muscle memory on the six steps that we've worked on. Best drill if you don't have a coach watching you. You can do this in your backyard. You can do this in a park. You can do it with baseballs, tennis balls, anything you have. Be sure to start with this drill. Okay, so after I've worked off the tee and I'm feeling pretty confident that my swing is dialed in, I'm gonna move to a moving ball. And this drill right here is gonna be side toss. I'm gonna toss the ball from the uh, 45 degree angle to Ruby. Now the pitcher, we're gonna line up like the pitcher is in this direction. And I'm gonna stand here and flip the ball to Ruby. She's gonna hit it toward that fence right there. So we're working on the same thought process, but this time the ball is gonna be moving in and as I'm flipping the ball to her, the pitcher is gonna to try to toss the ball where it crosses the heart of the plate about waist high. And Ruby's goal is to hit that ball on a line right there. Now, nobody's judging you. So we can use wiffle balls, tennis balls, a real baseball bat, it doesn't matter because the purpose of this is hand-eye coordination and repetition. Oftentimes we go with a big old bat, a big metal bat or a wooden bat, we get tired and our form gets compromised because of that. So we're gonna start with a wiffle ball bat. We're gonna get our technique right. We're gonna try to hit line drives into the fence. Here we go. Good. Pivot on that back foot and squash the bug. Good. Pick a spot, hit line drives. Good. One more. Good. Now we can move forward to a larger bat and a larger, harder ball. Good. 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 And all we're doing is we're incorporating the same six steps, but this time we're focusing on a ball that's moving at a slow pace. And once again, use a wiffle ball, use a softball, use a tennis ball, whatever you can get. All right, another drill to show the importance of rotating our belly button and getting our lower half in our swing is a drill that I like to put the bat behind your back. And in doing so, I'm gonna to try to hit the ball off the tee with the barrel, but it forces me to have to rotate and generate enough power to hit that ball off the tee. Now, as I told you earlier, the, the point of going up to the plate is to try to hit balls over people's heads, not to try to hit ground balls. Those are outs when you get to the big leagues. In Little League, we wanna hit line drives, line drives, line drives. In high school, we wanna hit them in the gaps. 
That's what makes baseball fun. So we want to put power and force from our lower half into our barrel, into the bat. And it starts from the bottom up. So as I said in this drill, you can take a bat, you can hike the tee up as high as you can. If it's not high enough, put the tee on a chair and get the, the height the way you need to. And I'm gonna bend down a little bit, but we're gonna rotate and you can move right on the plate. I'm gonna I'm lean this bat out, I'm gonna hike this bat out as far as I can. And we're gonna rotate to hit that ball off the tee. Now, there's broomsticks, there's other longer objects that you can use to be able to hit that ball, but the goal is to turn and make contact right there. And in doing that, I am able to point my belly button at the pitcher. When I'm hitting, as I drive the ball, when I follow through, my belly button should be pointing directly toward the pitcher. That's how I know that I've rotated all the way. Also, my back shoelaces should be pointing to the pitcher as well. If I don't pivot and I don't squash that bug, I lose power in that back leg. So this drill right here allows you to focus on rotating all the way through. Bottom of the ninth, you're playing outfield, ground ball coming to you, runners trying to score to tie or go ahead, and you gotta make that perfect throw or a ground ball to the infielder across the diamond, and you throw that ball and you wanna make sure it's gonna hit the first baseman in the chest. That all starts with the basics, and the basic of throwing is how you grip the ball. I'm gripping the ball four seams, and the reason I grip the ball four seams is because I want those seams to catch the air and fly straight and true. Four seams means you take, this is called the horseshoe, you take your fingers and you go against the horseshoe. So that way when I release the ball, four seams are catching air. If I'm a pitcher and I want the ball to move, I grab two seams. When I release the ball, these seams can catch air and they can sink or they can cut. So from a throw from a defensive player, we want four seams every time. I practice that every night. I'm laying in bed, I toss the ball up to myself, reach in my glove and grab four seams. Toss the ball, reach in my glove, grab four seams. Turn the ball, you want to be able to get four seams, whether it's from a ground ball or whether it's from a fly ball. Practice getting four seams so you can make that straight and true throw. Also, if I'm gonna short hop the cutoff man or the catcher with four seams, when the ball hits the ground, it bounces up straight. With two seams, oftentimes when it hits the ground, it will bounce off at a funny angle. So four seams are extremely important from a defensive player. Also, just like hitting, we wanna get our momentum and our weight behind our throws. So I'm gonna give you a drill right here that we can do anywhere that there's a straight line across. Whether it's on a field, this is a foul line. I'm gonna use that line to pretend that I'm fielding a ball and I'm gonna come up in my throwing position. I'm gonna start by putting my foot out so that my ankle is pointing to the target I'm throwing. Next, I'm gonna point my shoulder toward the target as if I'm shooting a rifle and this is the scope and the sights as to where I wanna hit. If I throw this way, it's gonna pull me off and pull that throw. If I close my shoulder too much, it's gonna make the ball go that way. So, ankle toward the target, stride, just like we're hitting, this is almost a hitting stance, front shoulder to the target, rotate, very similar to hitting. I've got the four seams. I'm gonna release the ball and snap my wrist to try to make these seams rotate as fast as possible. And then I will follow through to take the stress off my arm so we don't have an arm injury. And as I do that, my leg will come along with it. Once again, simulate a batted ball to you. Feel the ball in your glove, ankle toward the target, leg up to get momentum. I'm moving forward just like a baseball swing, front shoulder to the target, rotate, pull my glove down, throwing arm follows through, snap four seams, arm follow through, leg follow through, and I'm moving toward the target. That'll give you more power in your throws and better accuracy. Okay, here we are, we're in the field. 
and we're going to work on the techniques of fielding a ground ball. And this is not position specific, so I'm just going to kind of go through, you know, some of the steps and some of the fundamentals that will help you catch a ground ball at any position. I played outfield in the major leagues for 13 years, and this is drills that we worked on. It may seem simple, but we worked on them every single day. And from an outfielder or an infielder, the most important thing to remember in fielding a ground ball is to go down toward the ball like you're an airplane landing on the runway. We're not, if we're an airplane, we're not just gonna drop out of the sky. Because a lot of times that ball will take a bad hop and it'll get by us, or my head moves and I lose the focus on the ball. So as I'm approaching the ball, whether I'm a shortstop or an outfielder, I'm gonna break down as a plane is landing on the runway. And when I do so, it will bring me down in a smooth motion and I'll get down to the, to the level that the ball's coming. I'm gonna bend my legs, I'm gonna bend my knees, and I'm gonna lean forward. Glove will be out front. And I love to teach young players to take their throwing hand and put it between the glove and their face. That way, if it's a bad hop, it's not gonna hit me in the nose, it will hit me in the hand and bounce down. It's not gonna obstruct my vision because the ball is in the glove are gonna be out front. <clears throat> As an outfielder, we feel the ball. Glove hand is out front of our right leg. I'm left-handed, my right arm, right leg are out to field it. If you're right-handed, your glove leg and your glove arm will be out to feel the ball. We'll come forward like an airplane landing, bent knee, glove out front, hand in front between the face and the, and the glove. If I'm an infielder, I'm gonna come in like an airplane landing, both knees together, feet together, feel the ball out front. This is important, not here, because a bad hop will, will get by us, and plus we can't see our glove. Out front, hand, field, and we went over the steps of proper throwing, ankle to the target, shoulder, line up and throw. I'm gonna field a few ground balls right here, as an infielder, approach the ball, both knees bent, glove out front, get my footwork down. As an outfielder, get down on the ball, glove leg out front, feel the ball in front of you. So this is a, a drill that uh, we use in our baseball clinics that uh, not a whole lot of people know about. So you're getting some tips from the vault, some private tips. But if you can, and you don't have anything other than some tennis balls, a tennis racket, and no one else to hit you fly balls, this is a great way to hit yourself fly balls. Take the tennis ball in your glove and hit it up. By doing that, I can work on fly balls and positioning my body behind the ball. If you have a partner, let them take the tennis racket. They can hit fly balls you can get in your position. But it's this piece of cake. Flip the ball up out of your glove, in the air, get behind the ball, field it, bring it to your chest to throw. After we field a fly ball, we wanna keep our momentum behind the ball so we're fielding it coming forward and all the same steps that we've gone over in our throwing. Ankle to the target, front shoulder to the target. But it's important to feel the ball coming in to your base that you're throwing or your cutoff man. We don't want to feel the ball going backwards because we have no momentum and it will open us up for an errant throw. So once again, don't have anyone to hit you fly balls. Don't have an excuse not to still get them. So for a lot of the young players that are just getting into baseball or any other sport for that matter, it's very important to practice with your hand-eye coordination. Hand-eye coordination is, is a necessity for hitting, it's for fielding, it's for everything that you do in baseball and many other sports. And we're gonna work on hand-eye coordination with Ruby here. I like to take a, a wiffle ball or anything soft so that the player is not afraid to get hit by the ball. And we're gonna go a few feet apart and we're gonna get in our ready stance, and Ruby's gonna get her arms ready, and I'm just gonna flip the ball to her. She's gonna start with two hands. She's gonna grab the ball with two hands and flip it back to me. 
grab the ball with two hands and I'm changing the location every time of where the ball is going to go. I don't want her to know where it is. I want her to be able to react. Here we go. Good. And as we go, and as she gets better and better, and her hands get bigger, she'll be able to do it with one hand. Now, if she can't catch it with one hand, but it hits her palm, that's fine. Because when she puts a glove on her hand, that ball's gonna be in the glove. So it's not imperative that she actually catches that ball with one hand. Here we go, hand-eye coordination, one hand. Ready? Good, good job. Once again, she would have caught that with a regular glove. Good, good job. Her hands just aren't big enough to grab the ball, but she's getting her hands in the position that she needs to be. Excellent, lower, good job. Okay, that brings us to the next point. A lot of young players have problems understanding where their thumb should be pointed when the ball is thrown. Anything from the waist up, we're gonna catch with our thumbs to the sky. Anything from the waist down, we're gonna catch with our thumbs toward the ground. So a lot of times you'll see young players that try to catch that ball up here this way. And what that'll actually do is, it allows that ball to roll up the glove and hit them in the chin. A couple of those and they won't wanna play baseball anymore. So anything up over the waist, thumb to the sky. Okay, so now after we did our drill, we'll use a tennis ball this time and we'll work on thumb up, thumb down, thumb up, thumb down. And the younger players have a hard time having enough hand strength to open and close the glove on their own. So we're just gonna judge them as to whether they get their hand in the proper position. Once again, this is hand-eye coordination and we're not expecting seven-year-olds to get drafted next year to go play Major League Baseball. So here we go. Just getting her ready stance, thumb up, thumb down. High balls, thumb over the waist. Get your thumb up. Okay, I'll take it back. Thank you. Anything over your waist, you catch with the thumb up. Let me see it, thumb up. Anything under, thumb down. Ready, bend your knees, thumb up. Good job. Here we go. Anything over the waist, thumb up. Good job. You can take it with your other hand. Anything below the waist, thumb down. Nice. Below the waist, thumb down. Above the waist, thumb up. Good job, squeeze it hard. Also, we also see what Ruby right here, as a young player gets in their stance, because these gloves are so hard to open and close, I like to see the young players hit the web of their mitt and push it to make that, that target so much bigger now. And we'll keep the glove open during the play so that if the ball comes in, all we have to do is squeeze it. As you get older, you have the arm strength to open and close. But right now at the younger ages, we're gonna push that web in right now. Get your glove as big as possible and get in our ready stance. Come on, baby, hit me a ball. After we hit the ball in play, we become a base runner. So it's very important also to get to first base as quickly, as deliberately, and as few of steps as possible. I'm hitting from the right-handed batter's box right here. So I'm gonna load, stride, rotate. Remember, balance is the key so that after I hit the ball, my back foot is going to push off and accelerate me toward first base. Same thing from the left-handed batter's box. Make contact, I'm balanced. Back foot is going to push off and I'm going toward first base. Now remember, it's extremely important and it's being called more and more by umpires now for us to stay on the foul side of the foul line right here. A lot of young players will run in the field of play and there are some fields have a box that you have to be in but we really want to be either on the line or just in foul territory of the line. So once again, why is it important? Because if I'm off balance, that means I got to take about three more extra steps to get to first. If I'm on balance, I make contact, I'm going to push with this back leg, I'm going to put my body in a sprinter's position, 
and head to first base either on the line or just to the right of the foul line. All right, ball is hitting field of play. I'm trying to get down to the bag as quickly as possible. As I near the bag, there's a couple things I'd love to see young players and even players at the upper levels do. The umpire is making the call, and a lot of times he's gonna make that call off of the first thing that crosses first base. Not necessarily all the time he's watching your foot, he's just watching what crosses first base. So as I get closer, I'm gonna lean forward like I'm a sprinter in the Olympics trying to win a race. Sometimes my head will cross that bag before my foot and I might get the call go my way. Also, as I'm running to first base, it's very important to hit the closest part of that bag to home plate. It's quicker and it's easier for me to get my steps down and it's safer. So I want to put my toe on that front bag. Many fields that we play at, the home plate or, and, the, and the bases are spray painted, which makes the base very, very slippery. And a lot of times when we'll step with metal or plastic cleats, that slippery paint could cause us to roll our ankle and injure ourselves. So as I'm coming, the quickest way possible is to hit the front part of that bag, to lean over like a sprinter crossing the finish line. And as I go through the bag, I'm going to immediately look to the fence for an errant throw. Any throw that has bounced by the first baseman or gone over their head, I will immediately recognize it and decide whether I'm going to go to the next base or not. What I don't like to see is young players that get across the bag, step on top, be satisfied that they're at home at first, they made it, and they're looking for mom, dad, and grandma, and the ball goes back to the wall and we could have been the second base. So the play does not end when we touch the bag. Recap, getting down the bag, getting down the line in foul territory, step on the front part of the bag, look to the right, leaned over and a sprinter's finishing, and then as we check to see if I stay or go. Proper way to get from home to first in the quickest way possible. The crack of the bat, I'm taking off. I look in the field, I realize that the ball has made it past the outfielders or over their head. I'm thinking, gotta go to second, maybe even third. The key now, as I'm leaving the batter's box, is I want to be able to make what a lot of people will call a banana turn or a, a somewhat U-shaped turn right before I get to first base so that when I hit the bag at first, I want to be going in a straight line to second base. Young players oftentimes will hit the bag, even older players, and they'll get a big, big turn out here. The wider my turn is here, the more steps I have to take to get back in line with second base. So my goal on a ball that is hit that I can get a double or a triple is to cut this off as sharp and as straight as possible to get to second base. The same thing matters for third. Coming around third, oftentimes we see base runners get way out and they have to come back toward home plate. They get thrown out by six inches and the player says, oh, what could I have done? You should have made a sharper turn. The drill here is I've got tennis balls that are gonna be the boundary of my turn, the boundary of my banana turn. So as I hit the ball, I realize it's in the gap. I'm gonna start making my turn about halfway. I will stay inside of these tennis balls and what this banana route is gonna do for me is it's gonna put me on a path that after I hit the bag, I'm gonna be going straight towards second base. Also, Something else to think about. As I'm making my turn and I hit first base, ideally, I'm gonna hit the inside corner of the bag with my right foot, which will put me in line with second. This is a no-no. If I come and hit the bag in the middle with the opposite leg or the middle with my right leg, remember, the paint job could cause you to slip and injure yourself but it also does not give me anything to push off on to get a straight line. So, recap, ball is hit in the gap, immediately off the bat, I realize I'm gonna help my team by getting a double or a triple or even an inside the park home run. 
I'm making my banana route. Tennis balls are here for drill purposes. I'm staying inside the tennis balls. I will time my strides to be able to hit this bag inside corner. Propel myself in a straight line to second base. And if I do all those, a bang bang play more often than not with the proper technique will go my way. And then I can stand on second base and wave to my parents and grandparents with a double. In a time like this, it's a great opportunity for us to slow down and concentrate on the fundamentals of becoming a better baseball player and softball player. For all you boys and girls out there, I hope these drills are gonna help you out. Go out by yourself, get in front of a mirror, get a baseball, tennis ball, wiffle ball, or grab a brother, sister, daughter, mom, dad, and work on baseball and softball techniques to improve your game. All sports, especially baseball, are extremely important for the development of our youth. It teaches caring for your body, nutrition, physical fitness, teamwork, motivation, determination, working together to strive for one common goal, and that's to win together. So let's go out there and be advocates of sports, be advocates of baseball, and for all you boys and girls, be better and use these drills given by me and all these other great instructors to improve your game.